So today we're looking at the original heavy metal guitars from two classic brands, Gretsch and Dobro. And the question is, which one resonates most with you? Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom designed t-shirts and other swag. So we are looking at two resonator guitars. Mm -hmm. Some people watching this might go, oh, look, that's a Dobro. And you're half right, which is interesting and we'll get into it. Um, but these are two affordable resonators available from two historic brands, yep. Dobro, sort of, which we'll get into, and uh, Gretsch. Yep. And they are, they're very much alike and they are very different. Yeah, they both look kind of similar, but they feel different. They got different woods. They sound different. They do sound different despite the similarities in the build. So resonator guitars, have you played much resonator? Not really at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I've wanted there, one for a while. I know you have. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been. Yeah, it's one of my things that's been on my list. I really love the sound of it, um, and they've been out. I mean, they're kind of seen as kind of a classic Americana instrument. Yeah. Um, but do you know why they came into being? I mean, I, I think I could probably try to guess. Um, Enlighten us, O Cooper one. So. I don't know, but my guess is that before amplification, there needed to be assistance in the projection yeah. of a guitar so that i mean because you can tell right when you start playing one they're loud sound, yeah they're very loud so is that the scoop like with bluegrass players that, and that's stuff? the scoop yeah. yeah it's really interesting to follow the progression of like where the guitar is if you follow it back to the classic spanish guitar instrument nylon strings and stuff that eventually becomes x braced flat top steel string guitars for more volume, mm -hmm. those eventually said, hey, what can we do to make this flat top acoustic guitar a little louder? Let's stick some aluminum metal in it and uh, create a resonating chamber that will project these. There And there are a bunch of different designs. These are single cone spider uh, resonator designs, um, which the Dobro company actually invented, I believe. And uh, there's tricone versions. There's all sorts of stuff. Eventually, we ended up getting to electric guitars. Yeah. What I find intriguing about this whole thing of trying to get louder is that the instruments that were coming along along the way didn't just get lost of like, okay, we don't need flat top acoustic guitars anymore because we have resonators and they're louder. And we don't need resonators anymore because we have electric guitars and they're louder because the tones are unique, the sounds that we get out of them, all of that stuff found its way into uh, music. But these are generally associated with two kinds or three kinds of music. What do you think they are? I think bluegrass for sure. Um, I don't know. Is bluegrass different than folk? There, I think there's a yes. bluegrass folk uh, Grammy, so maybe they get lumped together or something. But I don't know what what else is there. Something that's way out there. So there's bluegrass. There's regular country yeah. music, um, and then there's like delta blues. Any type of like acoustic blues you can often hear a resonator on because it's got that unique brassy metallic sound to it. So you're saying like this was made for the Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack. Sure. Because it's got all those, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's you know what's interesting too is we're, we're sitting here and we're holding two resonators um, that are round-necked, which means they are kind of by definition designed to be played like you would an acoustic guitar. But uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't say that there are plenty of flat-necked models out there and you might have often seen someone playing one like that like a lap steel, yeah. Um, and it's designed to be played uh, kind of in that manner because if you grab, like that one has a square neck version of it and if yeah. you grab it, it's like, yeah, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, it's designed to be. Is the square neck or flat neck kind of a Jerry Douglas? Is that what he mm -hmm. would, because I've seen him play, you know, a few times, incredible slide, but yeah. it's all, you know. And it's not to say you couldn't throw a slide on here, but it's totally different kind of you, Right. You're typically going to be playing like this in the guitar position, although there's nothing that prevents you from turning this. Yeah. And I, personal preference, I don't know, and maybe someone can chime in if you play a, a square-necked 
you know, resonator laying down. Um, I've always thought this was more versatile. I could play it either way. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've always kind of appealed to have. So that's the idea behind what the resonator is. Now the Gretsch uh, idea here, that's the one you've got. So this goes back to the 1930s, their, their whole look and aesthetic. And this is part of their roots line of folk Americana style instruments. This is very similar as we said, but this is a Dobro from Epiphone. And what's interesting about that is a lot of people refer to these not as resonators, yeah. but as dobros. Oh, you play the dobro. And it's weird because it's got it's done the Kleenex thing where the dobro brand became synonymous with the resonator. Yeah. Um, and I, I find that to be fascinating history because now both of these are from iconic brands, but they're both imported from overseas. Yeah. It's very different from what they were. So do you know any of the history of the dobro? I don't really. Um, you know, I grew up, when I started playing guitar, my mom was always like, you got to get a dobro. She listens to so much dobro music. And I think it was always a thing. I did think that any guitar with a resonator was, was synonymous dobro. with dobro. Yeah. Um, but I'm not super familiar. Like I said, I haven't played a ton of them. I lo love the sound and I love how they feel and everything. But what's the, the well, history so of the Well, so going band? back into, I, I believe it's 20s, 30s, when these kind of came out, um, there were two primary brands uh, over the years. You had... Dobro and you had National Resophonic, um, or just National. And what's interesting about that is Dobro is from uh, two brothers. That's where the name comes from. Is the two Do brothers Dopiera, if I'm pronouncing that right, brothers, uh, and they created the the guitar, the designs. They did some solid body stuff and everything too. And it's an interesting history that happened with the company because they built these. They owned National for a bit, so National was part of Dobro. Yeah. But it was its own thing with its own designs. They had all this stuff going. At some point, the, the company got sold. Then it was purchased back under a different brand name. And then in, I think it was the 90s, uh, it was sold to Gibson, the brand name. And it moved to Nashville. And then uh, now it's handled under the Epiphone brand name. So I'm not aware of any US-made Dobros that Gibson is currently doing. Uh, but that's, that's where Dobro comes from. It was these brothers. So that's how they came up with the name, and they were integral to invent, you know, basically crafting the instrument that we know today. Yeah. And then it's it's gone to a lot of other companies. So National Resophonic, which is still around, they make really high end resonators of all sorts of different kinds. You've got Gretsch making resonators. You've Fender off and on has made resonators, yeah. Gold Tone, and all these others. Uh, but it's just a unique instrument that I think every time someone looks at it is is awesome. And I wanted to do uh, you know a feature on this to one compare these two because they're affordable. So yeah. I think I'm of the opinion maybe because I want one that every guitar player should try to have unique things like this in their collection. Expand what you're doing, practice some slide, get a different tone, yeah. and you can do it with these at an affordable price. Yeah, and both Gretsch and Epiphone have a ton of options. Like Epiphone makes a great. Uh, affordable banjo, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Gretsch is making a little bit of everything. They have resonator ukuleles, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, picking up more folk instruments like mandolins and resonators and even ukes, you know, it, it adds a whole different kind of layer if you're at home and writing songs, switch over to something else and write on there, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is with, with both of these, they kind of make expanding the collection pretty affordable and easy you know yeah and it's you know if you play guitar already you know how to play this i think a lot of people look at it and go oh i have to play slide yeah and maybe they're intimidated by it we talked before if like i can play slide in a song with a group i'm intimidated playing it by myself still and it's something that i'm developing but you th these are not limited to just playing slide yeah you can play anything on here and really bring that sound into what you're doing yeah so i'll tell you what we're going to talk about some specific details on this, but before we do that, I actually want to have everybody listen to a demo of it of you playing because I'd like them to judge with their ears first, yeah. and then we're going to talk about some stuff on the other side. So listen to the demo, draw a conclusion of which one you think you like the sound of better, and then we'll talk about some other feature differences. Check it out. Thank you. 
All right, so there you have it. So did you pick which one you liked? Good, okay. Now let's talk about some of the differences. So they're both wood bodied. They're both laminate construction. This one is maple mm -hmm. and it feels pretty robust. Feels a bit heavier yeah. than the Gretsch. That one's mahogany. We got mahogany over here. Um, also not a light instrument, but yeah. when I grabbed that one, played it second, definitely a noticeable difference. And let's put that in context. They weigh about six, seven pounds. So they weigh about what a solid body electric guitar does, yeah. but all the weight's down here because of the resonator. Yeah. And um, it's just not something you typically associate with when you're picking up an acoustic guitar. It's definitely heavier. Yeah, it's heavy. They have very different neck profiles. So this is like one of the most pronounced Vs yes. that I've ever felt. Whereas this is a nice kind of typical yeah. C-shaped neck. They call um, that a round neck. <laughs> it is a round neck. They call that a round neck. They should call it a, a triangle neck. It's, it's a big deal, but it's not uncomfortable. It's fine. It's not, and that's one of the things that, you know, I, that's one of the reasons I kind of wanted to say, listen first, because you might go, oh, I like that, but if we had said, oh, it's a very pronounced V, you go, oh, I, that's definitely not for me. And here's the reason that it's important that we kind of frame this. It is a very pronounced V. And when you grab it, not in a playing position, you're like, there's no way this is gonna be comfortable. But when you sit with it, it kind of finds that valley yeah. in the palm of your hand, and it's fine, yeah. it's absolutely fine. Yeah, for sure. You know, you can get comfortable with it. I think the kind of stuff that I was playing to, staying in one sort of fixed position, mm -hmm. that's a, a sound of, that's the sound of music that these signal to me, so that's kind of why I was playing it. But then you start to realize it's kind of what it's made for a little yeah. bit. You know, finger-picked blues, um, and it, it's comfortable for that, you know, yeah. and, and I like it. A lot of thumb over the top stuff. Thumb over it, the top. It works for that well. Um, another thing that we noted, uh, I think we're in agreement, we like the tuners on this one better. Yeah. We actually went and checked the uh, tension of the strings on this because as we're tuning it up, fresh out of the box, uh, it felt rather stiff, but it's just the tuners. I mean, it's, yeah. it's 12 53 strings. These so, are about the same. They're not really thick, heavy gauge stuff. Open gear mm -hmm. guys, which I always like, but those are sort of, you know. A little smoother. Yeah, what are those? They're Grovers. Grover are those actual Grovers? They're actual, well, yeah, a, they say Grover on them. Yeah, kind of, they're just smoother to, to I, tune up. And I typically you know? don't like the smaller, I've, I've said this before, I typically don't like the smaller uh, buttons on Grovers. But yeah, these are fine. And they're very smooth. Both of them look right. You know, it's not like they've got them. the resonator look going. Yeah. Um, like the Dobro name with the liar up on the headstock. Yeah. That's killer. Um, I like the look of this. It's interesting. There's no label inside at all on the on, on inside cool. the F holes. It's just like interesting. But it's called the Hound Dog. Yeah. Um, and I got a nothing, label over it here. It ain't nothing but. Yeah. So we got the Hound Dog over there. The box car over here, and I believe both Gretsch and Dobro Epiphone, they have metal body versions as well. They do have metal bodied versions, which we should do a review of, because we I think we have both. Um, all of these are imports, so it's been crazy trying to get them in, but they have an even brassier sound, a lot more heft to them. Um, but you know, if you wanna own a guitar that looks like the cover of the Dire Straits album, you know. Brothers in Arms. <laughs> um, that's actually a national, I'm pretty sure, with a little Hawaiian motif that's on it, which is pretty cool. Really? Yeah. It's cool. There's, is there a lot of Dobro on that album? I'm trying to think. I'd have to go back and listen to which songs. I don't know. Romeo and Juliet, maybe? That's good. All right, it's a good album. <laughs> um, but yeah, the thing is, so I think Chris has been wanting a, a resonator for quite some time. You would probably go for a metal body, correct? I probably would. I like that particular, even kind of harsh in a good way tone. Yeah. There's a harshness about a resonator. It's that brassy, tinny sound that projects, and and it's a great tone, particularly for particular things. And, and you know, we talked about the music that it's used on. I think it could really be great on a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I've come to really enjoy listening to, you know, you're listening to some something and you hear the sound of a banjo in the background and yeah. it's like, this doesn't belong here, but I really like it. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and so I'd like to see these kind of get more use like that. I'd love to experiment with one, you know, at home doing recordings and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah I'd probably get a metal one, but I do like the sounds of these. And here's, here's where the demo comes into play. So they have different feels. Which one did you prefer feel-wise? 
I think I prefer this one a little bit more. It's just tough because they did seem maybe the things that I liked and disliked make them kind of neutral yeah. for me. Um, I thought this one projected a little bit more, had a, a kind of deeper, louder sound. This one sounded a little sweeter to me. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair, you probably heard in the demo and you're fighting the urge to comment. Yes, I heard this one going out of tune as I was playing it. These are They're both fresh new. out of the box. So, Straight out of the box. I mean, we're working hard getting these tuned. It's just going to fall out. So New that, strings are fun. That might be affecting my opinion a little bit because uh, I thought this one stayed in tune a little bit better. Yeah. Um, like the tuning feel of tuning the guitar, since we're talking about how much of a hassle it was to get them in tune, I like the feel of these ones a little bit more. Um, something that came into it, too, is kind of the difference in, to me, just kind of how the resonator metal part felt oh, on the, my hand. The bridge cover? Yeah. And they might be almost exactly the same, but... It's it's a very similar design, for sure. But this one, to me, I maybe noticed it a little bit more. Yeah. I, you know, maybe because I played that second, I was used to it, and it, there's a lot of mystique that goes into how I feel about the guitars when I'm demoing them. But I think at the end of the day, I'd probably get this one. I like mahogany. You like I think the tone cool. on that one better, I like too? the tone on this one a little bit more, and maybe I might... If I got it, I might have to fight it a little bit more than I would that one. Uh, but I think it's worth noting that, to my knowledge, and maybe one of them changed or not, but I think they're the exact same price. Uh, roughly. I'm, you know, I'm hesitant to even say right now because pricing keeps changing. Like every time we turn around, we have to update pricing on our website. Yeah. So check our website. It's alamomusic.com. Either way, knowing that they are in the same realm right they're in the same within a hundred dollars but i think they might be exactly the same or just a few bucks here uh i think they're comparable that you can make a choice one player might like one over the other mm -hmm. but both would be getting a quality and, instrument. and, and yeah. the price is kind of the point too because for around 500 bucks you can add either of these to your collection yeah um you know i, I agree with you on the tone so this one has kind of a sweeter treble uh, that one has more bass, a bit of a more a woodier sound. Yeah, I think you know, even though they're both laminate, that one just ha has a bit. You've got the resonator, and you've got kind of a woodiness to it. Whereas on this one, you're hearing more of the resonator, and maybe it's because it's maple. Even though it's a laminate, it's you know, there's there's a bit more brightness to it, yeah. um, and you're you're hearing a lot of that cone, you yeah. know, that predominant cone coming out of it. Um, which in in some respect kind of reminds me of the metal bodied ones without having that kind of echoey brassy chamber yeah. sound out of it. But I think they're both very cool. I think a lot of people would grab this one because of the neck. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you made here, here's the question for you if you're watching this video, if you made your uh, determination, listen to the demo, which one you liked better, and then we talked about what the neck feels like on that versus this and so forth. Did your opinion change? Um, Either way, I think you'd be happy with either. I think it's cool to have something with the classic Dobro name on it. I think the Gretsch Root stuff is fantastic. Yeah. And it, it all comes down to preference. But one should resonate with you. Here is my encouragement. If you are a guitar player and you want to add something to your collection, maybe consider it not being a straight up like flat top acoustic guitar. Yeah. Or electric guitar. Look at a banjo. Look at a... A six-string guitar banjo, resonator, mandolins, stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I would also recommend if you can put your hands on one or both of these. Um, obviously, yes, I went towards finger picking. I went towards bluesy kind of vibe. But maybe just play with the pick, do stuff that you would usually do on a flat top acoustic because it'll sound like a completely different song and it might kind of inspire you in a different way. They sound really great with picks as well. Play heavy metal. Play heavy metal. That would be super tight. Uh, <laughs> I actually saw a guy play flamenco on one of these ones. That's awesome. And it worked. So it, it was perfect. It worked so well with the brassy sound that you get out of the, the yeah. cone. Yeah, they you know they don't need to just be pigeonholed into or one the aluminum or three sound that you zone. get out of it because it's not brass. Yeah. Or the for our friends across the pond, the aluminium sound. It's kind of aluminium. That's great. Um, but yeah, pick them. Fingers or a flat pick. Yeah. It, everything's going to sound a little different than you're used to if you haven't played one, but they can all be kind of inspiring voicings of what you're already playing. Very cool. So if you're interested in a resonator, either of these or the other ones we have in stock, check it out on alamomusic.com. Where do they need to go, Cooper? I think you need to go to uh, 
alamomusic.com. You can chat with someone live on there. You can check out all the specs of the guitars, and we can help you find the one that suits your needs. At the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the one with a giant metal disc in the middle of it that you are playing fun stuff on it. So get to it. Thanks for watching our channel. Subscribe, turn on notifications, and like them if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.